Dining out in the 1940s was a pretty dismal affair. Then there were the pie carts, the original fast food joints. Although very common, virtually every town of any note had a pie car bag then. None have had the staying power of the White Lady, started by milkshake vendor Brian Washer in 1948. It's now run by his son Peter and grandson Max. Beautiful. Thank Beautiful you. parking. <laughs> She's lived through 19 Prime Ministers, the six o'clock swill, flipped its first beat patty ten years before the clown came to town, survived riots, blackouts and the scourge of a cashless society. The times are so radically different. It's a very poor night, even in the 70s when I drove off and couldn't find $20 underneath the car. These days you find bugger all. And it's a hit with touring celebs out on the Raz. Guns N' Roses' Axl Rose just the latest with an appetite for destruction. When people go overseas, that's what they talk about seeing. And that is one of the reasons why we were number one in Lonely Planet for so many years, is because uh, people actually like street vendors. We like to encourage nightlife. And 75 years on, they've still got a keen eye on the future. What's your favourite thing on the menu? Milkshakes? Yeah, I thought so. Chippy. Oh, geez, <laughs> chippy, chippy. <laughs> We're going to Fulton Commerce Street right now uh, at the White Lady, third generation owner Max. Good evening, Max. 75 years, congratulations. What's your secret? Uh, hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, we're excited. We've just uh, we're, share perseverance, my dad always says. Um, you know, uh, we're just, you know, we'll keep making burgers as long as people keep coming down. And um, yeah, they do. So uh, we'll just keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, uh, burgers now. Yeah. But is it true that your grandfather actually had to be convinced to put hamburgers on the menu sometime maybe in the 60s? Yeah, well, uh, you know, power and sort of uh, equipment wasn't the same back then, and I think it was just, you know, he was worried about the capacity of, uh, you know, actually creating cook-to-order food versus, you know, sort of your single-phase Bay Marie food. So, yeah, in the 60s or, you know, late 50s there, it was sort of the big change to cook-to-order, which is uh, what we still do today. Wild, wild stuff. Mm -hmm. Max, you're the third generation. <laughs> uh, did you actually have any choice when it came to being <laughs> part of the family business? Oh, well, you know, um, um, yeah, no, I grew up in the business and uh, I think through my teenage years and my early 20s, I did everything not to be, you know, tried to get away from it, I think, like, uh, as some people would, but, you know, uh, working for the family and, um, you know, um, I came back into it and, you know, did it with my heart. I worked with my mum, my dad, my sister, I'm a great crew of people and, um, yeah, it's the best thing, it's the best thing in life. I'm, uh, yeah, very happy, very happy and, um, you know, we're... Yeah, it's just great being a past, but great thing being a part of a family business like we are. You know, I think uh, we saw your daughter at, uh, in the Campbell in the Tuck. little story that we just played uh, just before. Was that your daughter? Is she going to pick up the reins and flip some burgers in the future? Do you think? Well, I'll tell you, it was pretty hard to not, you know, to stop her from working last night. She's very keen. So um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Well, uh, happy birthday, the white lady. I'll see you later on. Much later on. I'm going to go clubbing first. Oh. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> happy birthday. Hey, awesome. See you at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs>